There are plenty of myths and rumors that we hear all the time when we're going to theme parks. These are things that literally the park has never confirmed or said anything about, but maybe you hear it from your friend or you hear it from the people standing in front of you in line. These rumors are spread by word of mouth. But that's the thing though. These aren't just rumors. These are myths. These haven't necessarily been proven false yet. So with that being said, today we're going to be looking at the myths of Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, Six Flags Great Adventure was my hometown park for about 17 years, so I've heard a lot of rumors in my time, and there's one that I heard more than any other that people were the most concerned about and were most interested in. And that rumor was that King Ka, the tallest coaster in the world and the fastest coaster in the U.S., was supposed to move to China. Now you may be thinking, well, that's ridiculous. Why would they ever get rid of that ride? It's such a great marketing tool. Well, don't you worry, it actually gets even more ridiculous than that. The first time I heard this rumor was like 2007, 2008, which was only two, three years after the ride opened. People actually thought that this ride that had just opened was moving to China. Now given, the ride was immensely popular and would always have hours and hours long waits, so it's no wonder that it's believable that a Chinese billionaire company could have came over to Six Flags and said, hey, we want to buy that coaster from you. And on top of this, the ride had its fair share of operational issues. It broke down a lot, thus bringing the weight up, and sometimes it would break down multiple times during the day, and it still does to this very day. So the prospect of Six Flags getting rid of a ride like that wouldn't be out of the question. But of course, now, more than a decade since that rumor originated, we now know that that never ended up happening and that this was never actually true. If you look it up on Google, there literally is not a single search result for Kinnika going to China. So despite the fact it was one of the most popular rumors that I have ever heard about the park, there was no substantial evidence behind it. And I know exactly why. So here's my theory on how this rumor started. One day, there was a group of 8th graders waiting in line for a ride, let's say at Hurricane Harbor, right? Behind them, they got like some 2nd graders who, you know, they're looking over, they see Kinnika over the tree line, they're excited, they're pumped to eventually ride that one day. They're not tall enough yet, you know, so they're, they're excited, but, you know, they have to wait a little bit. So these 6th graders or 8th graders or whatever, these middle schoolers, they come up with this brilliant idea to prank these kids and get a little, a little chuckle. So one of them turns to these kids and says, hey kid, you see that ride over there, that big green tall ride? Oh yeah, King Ka, I know it. Can't wait to ride it one day. Ooh, yeah, about that kid, it's moving to China, so better grow up quick, kid. W w what So then what happens? This kid goes home, cries himself to sleep, goes ahead, tells his parents, tells his friends at school, and then everyone starts telling each other because everyone's freaking out. Everyone's like, oh, well, well, I want to be able to ride this one day, or oh, I don't want this ride to leave, and everyone starts losing their mind, and this spreads like wildfire. So even though Six Flags never said a word about King Ka moving to China, and never was there any evidence to support this claim, people still believed it, and it still was something widely believed by the Six Flags community. And that right there, folks, is the power of word of mouth. Roll credits. Okay, okay, as great of a rumor as that one was, we still got way more to talk about. So, here's the next one. It's about Bizarro. So, if you've been to Great Adventure, you know that Bizarro is right at the edge of the park and right next to the safari. Now, Great Adventure Safari has a lot of free-range animals, right? There's a large fenced-in area where they get to be in, right? There isn't individual fences which in the fenced-in area. So, the rumor was for a while that monkeys would be able to get over the fence climb into the area that Bizarro is in, and then get on the track, which would either cause the ride to shut down, or the car would actually run over the monkeys. Hey, yo, look, it's monkeys. Yo, hey, what's good, monkeys? What do you, what do you think, these guys are like chimpanzees or something? Yo, yo wait, what, what is that in the back? Is, is that a roller coaster? Yo, yo, monkeys, get out of the way! Monkeys, move! Oh my god, they have AirPods in. Monkeys, move! Monkeys! No! Oh my god! <clears throat> well, uh, I'm pretty sure that never happened. Uh, to be honest, I actually don't even know if the Safari even has monkeys in it anymore. I think it did for a time, but I don't know if they even do anymore. But I'm pretty sure that if Bizarro ran over monkeys or monkeys ever got on the track, he probably would have heard about it. So I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that this myth is busted. Alrighty then, moving on. The next one I kind of briefly mentioned in my other Six Flags Great Adventure video, 
uh, check it out if you will. I kind of I kind of hate a little bit in it, so if you don't want to see that, don't even bother. But anywho, I mentioned very briefly that Rolling Thunder had this rumor floating around it that eventually the cart would just cave in through the track and everyone on the train would die in a blaze of glory. Now, of course, this rumor is completely plausible, sure. But let's be honest, as much as Six Flags doesn't do a great job of upkeeping things, I don't think they'd be running a ride if they really thought it could have broken like that and endangered the lives of several people. Oh, wait, what? They, they did this already? And, and people did actually die? Oh. Oh. Oh, yikes. But I guess lucky for us this time, uh, Six Flags actually closed the ride before it got too damaged, I suppose, or too old. So luckily, we never got to see this outcome come to fruition. However, we can kind of see what would have happened if the ride was still around today, as there is still a piece of track that's still there because it was kind of used as support for the El Toro track, so it kind of has to stay there. And as we can see now, with the track completely rotted and just torn apart, I bet you if you put a train on that thing today, it probably would break. So you know what? Let's give ourselves an applause here. Let's give ourselves an applause. Clap it up, boys. We got a rumor right. We might have been a few years early, but hey, we eventually got it. So let's go. The next one on the list is one I actually haven't heard from many people outside of my immediate friend group, if I'm being honest. But because of the nature of this rumor, that doesn't surprise me at all. And you'll find out in a little bit why that is. You see, in 2014, there was a little movie called Jersey Boys coming out in theaters. And what better place to advertise than the biggest park in New Jersey? So the studio behind Jersey Boys decided to strike a deal with Great Adventure and get those ads all throughout the park. The most notable of these was over the loudspeakers, where usually they just play random popular music songs like they do today. But instead of those popular music songs, they decided to play the soundtrack from Jersey Boys. But the interesting thing they decided to do is instead of playing from the whole library of the movie, they decided to play one song and one song only. It just so happened to be the most popular song from the film, that song being Sherry. And aside from brief interludes when they would talk about the Jersey Boys for a little bit, this song would play on repeat the entire day throughout the entire park non-stop. So when you're waiting in line for El Toro, all you hear is Sherry. And then when you're going to the bathroom, all you hear is Sherry. And then when you're going to get candy, all you hear is Sherry. Now you may be thinking, oh, well, that's pretty annoying, but what's the big deal about it? You see, I truly believe that this was a brainwashing attempt by Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, to be honest, most guys going through the park probably didn't even notice that Jersey Boys and Sherry Baby was playing on repeat on the speaker. And as a result, unknowingly to them, that gets stuck into their head, and then what do they do the next day? They're like, hmm, what do I want to do on the Sunday afternoon? You know what? I kind of want to go see that Jersey Boys movie. Or you know what, honey? I know what we should name our next born child. How about Sherry? Or how about for Mother's Day, I will get my mom some berries from Sherry's Berries. Ah, today's sponsor, psych, I wish. Anyways, you get the idea. Six Flags Great Adventure was trying to make the world go Sherry crazy. Now you might be thinking, why in the world would Six Flags Great Adventure have any interest in making the world go nuts over Jersey Boys and Sherry Baby? Well, when you take a look at Six Flags' leadership at the time, the park president of Magic Mountain was Bonnie Sherman Weber. She eventually went on to be the senior vice president of in-park services. But why does that matter? Who is this lady? And if she was the park president of Magic Mountain, why does that matter to Great Adventure? Well, how about we take a closer look at her name? Bonnie Sherman Sherry. Sherry, baby. Well, there you have it, folks. Sherry Weber wanted to get her name spread around the nation and using Jersey Boys as a guise to get it around the country. And I can hear you guys right now. But attraction ideas? How does Sherry Weber, as the park president of Magic Mountain, have this authority and great adventure? Well, it's quite simple, my boy. You see, when Sherry Weber left as park president of Magic Mountain, guess who took her place? None other than the former park president of Six Flags Great Adventure, 
It's all intertwined, baby. It's a conspiracy. But I didn't fall for it. I wasn't going to fall for this brainwashing technique. The Six Flags really think that I'm that stupid that I would fall for such a thing? <laughs> uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, sh- Sherry, get out of here. What are you, what are you doing? Any- anywho, on to the next one. And this one just so happens to be our final one. I know you're all very upset, very sad that the video's coming to an end, but it has to. It has to at some point, right? And for this one, we actually do have to go back to King the Ka again. Uh, it's not about King the Ka, but King the Ka's story is pretty important to this. So I already mentioned earlier that when King the Ka opened, it had operational issues that prevented it from being open a lot of the time. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is just an unavoidable mistake. It's such a big ride. It was record breaking. Of course, there's going to be issues like this. Well, no, there really weren't supposed to be any. Intamin had built a ride like this prior that was only a little bit smaller and a little bit less fast and that they messed this one up. That right being top door dragster at Cedar Point, and yet with King the Ka, they managed to mess up the operational side of it. So the myth goes like this. Six Flags investing a lot of money into this ride was very upset about this because they built a whole land for the ride. So whenever the ride was down, there was no one in that land, meaning that they were paying a bunch of workers to work there and they weren't making any money from them working. So basically, Six Flags went to Intamin and said, hey, we're not going to work with you anymore if you don't make up for this. So Intamin, being a roller coaster manufacturer having to rely on these theme parks, came up with a plan to get back in the goodwill of Six Flags, and that was to gift them a roller coaster. Now, this wasn't just any roller coaster. It wasn't one they had left over or anything like that. Like This was built from the ground up, custom made for Six Flags to get back in good favors with them. This ride would open the next year, and it just so happened to be one little ride called El Toro. That's right, as this myth goes, Intamin gave Six Flags, arguably if not one of, the best wooden coasters in the world for free. A coaster that nowadays most parks would pay easily $50 million at least to get. Intamin gave to Six Flags for zero dollars. Adjusted for inflation, of course. Now, one can argue that if this rumor is true, which it very well could be, that Intamin has made that money back through all the extra contracts they've gotten with Six Flags since then that they wouldn't have gotten had they not given El Toro to Great Adventure in the first place. So, if true, this move by Intamin could be seen as a massive, great move for them, or a huge blunder a blunder in which someone should have got fired for but that's just a theory a theme park theory thanks for watching if you guys have any other uh myths or legends or rumors about six great adventure that i did not mention in this video please put them in the comments because i'd love to hear them because who knows maybe i was just in a bubble and i didn't hear all these other great rumors that maybe everyone else was hearing who knows And even if you have rumors or myths from another park, I'd love to hear them too. Maybe I'll make a video about those. Who knows? But anyways, uh, sorry for the long wait on this one. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully not as long in the future.